Good morning. Do I start with that customary Happy New Year? You remember those good old days when we used to wish like that? Not only wish Happy New Year, we used to go roaming around. We used to catch up with friends. We used to do partying. We used to go to movies. We used to go for restaurants, malls. We used to have a wonderful time roaming around. New Year was something which was a celebration regardless of anything that you are doing or anything that you were. Anyway, those were the good old days. Let's see what happens now. 2021 has finally ended. I think we should uh, say happy end of 2021 rather than saying happy new year because we don't know whether the new year is going to be very happy or not. Let us see how it uh, goes. I have always been a person who has taken life one day at a time. You know, one very good proverb which I've always believed in is hope for the best and prepare for the worst. So I'm an optimist. I always hope for the best. I always say that, yes, yeah, something nice will happen. This will happen. That will happen. All that I keep hoping for. Yet, I prepare for the worst. If you do that, you don't get caught unawares. I have been constantly reminding that the only permanent thing in life is change. And also, change comes now at such a fast pace, such unexpected twists and turns that it is not enough to adapt to change. You have to anticipate change. But of late, I think we are anticipating a too much of change. First wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave, fifth wave, second, sixth wave. Co Corona, COVID-19, Delta, Omicron, all sorts of new, new fancy words. And always talking about doomsday. The moment we feel, okay, we have survived. Some of us have gone through a very bad time. Some of us have been affected directly with the COVID. Some of us have even lost people to COVID. But then loss is loss, isn't it? Whether we have lost somebody to COVID or to any other thing. Why is it that we have forgotten that everybody who comes into this world, everyone who is born has to die? So when deaths take place, it is immaterial whether a person died because of COVID or whether he died because of cancer or whether he died of old age or whether he died out of an accident. It doesn't make a difference, isn't it? Anyway, the point to be kept in mind uh, is that we have to prepare for the worst, but at the same time hope for the best, no? Okay. So one of the things that uh, was in my mind continuously for at least a year or so, uh, may, at least definitely when the second wave of COVID came in is the way we are getting isolated from each other. People who used to be meeting each other, greeting each other, spending time with each other, sharing common activities, I find that they are suddenly getting isolated. We have reduced our social circles to our innermost circle. In a way, I was happy that some people said that, you know, I have a stronger bonding with my family now because we are spending more time indoors and we are caught in these lockdowns and all. Good, I'm happy for you. But let me ask you a simple uh, uh, question. <clears throat> Why did you need a forced lockdown to bond with your family? If you really felt for your family, if you really felt that you should have done it, even when there was no compulsion, no? So I'm not very sure how long this is going to last, how much the you know, long-term effects of this so-called bonding of family and all that is going to be there. I'm just cautioning you. I'm not trying to put you down or to negate what you have done. At the same time, definitely what I am see looking around and seeing is people do not want to extend beyond their immediate nearest social circle. People are keeping distance from each other. People are isolating. And that is going to add further 
to this much bigger pandemic which i have been cautioning people about which is the pandemic of loneliness let's do you know a simple exercise if you want to make a list of people whose company you enjoy whether they are with you or not it may be an old friend who is now living in a different country it may be somebody who you know out of convenience you don't meet very often but if you were to make a list and say these are the people whose company i enjoy most given a chance i'd like to spend maximum time with these uh, 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 people so if you make that list ask yourself does your name come in that at all or not do you say yes i thoroughly enjoy my own company this is something which is so 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 significant no 24 by 7 into 365 into whatever the number of years you have ahead of you you are going to be in your own company you cannot get away from it so wouldn't you like to make friends with yourself wouldn't you like to have your own company and enjoy it more and uh, uh, more wouldn't you like to make those efforts supposing you have a friend whom you really like you feel that this uh, uh, person is very good is you know uh, not only a wonderful human uh, uh, being but also you know connects very well to you maybe that person has done one or two favors to you the person's pleasant company you can learn so much by being in the company of that person what do you do you nurture that relationship i have always been reminding people that every relationship every important relationship in your life has to be constantly nurtured so today let us talk about how much we are nurturing our friendship with our own self are you putting in that effort to become a good friend of yours and enjoy your own company which is what we call as solitude you can call it aloneness which surprisingly has got nothing to do with loneliness in fact i was very fascinated to read recently that swami chinmayananda said solitude not companionship is the opposite of loneliness opposite mind you give it a thought initially it may look what is he uh, talking about but it is a fact and in this era i have got one very very clear thing to say solitude should be without gadgets without technology if you say yes tomorrow is sunday and i have got all the time so i'm going to spend the time alone the whole day i'm not going out anywhere and not connecting to any friends but ask yourself what are you going to do if you are going to take the help of technology be it your smartphone be it a tablet be it a uh, laptop or be it a tv if you are going to spend time with those people it is not solitude according to me it is not aloneness i think i mentioned this earlier also there was a time when pe- uh, somebody had very nicely said love is not staring into each other's eyes but looking together in the same direction what a wonderful a touching proverb it used to be till smartphones came today i see a lot of lovers looking in the same direction of the mobile phone and that is not togetherness it is not a romantic and a friendly relationship if they feel that they have to be together along with a mobile phone it is almost like uh, what we used to say earlier pati patni or wo there's a third uh, what happens if uh, you know you are in love with somebody and you find that there is a third person involved in this uh, uh, relationship how angry you will get how jealous and how upset you will uh, get 
same thing happens over uh, here i don't know how many people are indulging in extra marital affairs with another human being but i can see huge herds of people having extra marital relationships with the smartphone and that is something which is taking away our solitude if we can make genuine sincere efforts to make friends with ourselves to enjoy that solitude or you know aloneness as i would uh, call it in fact there's something very interesting uh, i was just looking it up the root of alone you know this word alone the root it says is from two words which is all one and wholly one now if you are all one and wholly one that in true words is what that you are uh, alone and you are complete by uh, yourself if you cannot enjoy your own company how do you expect others to enjoy company with you that's what i ask some people who come for counseling and they say i'm very lonely nobody loves me nobody cares for me i'm craving for at least one person who will give me that you know close and warm uh, love and i tell that person do you love yourself do you give yourself that warmth if you do not then why do you expect any other human being in this whole world to do so have you not been able to identify your own good qualities have you not been able to work on your so called negative qualities so that i reduce that and i make myself more lovable this whole process of love companionship loving uh, uh, relationships it has to start with your own self and that is what i feel we are missing out different surveys have shown in london uh, 55% of uh, the adult population in london you know said that uh, uh, they feel lonely quite often in us the figures are slightly low 45% uh, percent. but overall if you see if half the population feels that they are alone they are lonely they are isolated from others they do not have the warmth and the fulfillment of human uh, company of people who care for them who love them and who are affectionate towards uh, them that's a huge population you're talking about no that's why I keep saying that loneliness is a much bigger epidemic imagine if 50% of the population were afflicted with covid how the situation would be here we have 1% of the population getting afflicted and all hell breaks loose the whole nation you know rises up to uh, take care of how to deal with this uh, covid and all but when half the population is suffering from another epidemic why are we not doing something about it i have already mentioned about this wonderful person of you know called dr vivek murthy who was the surgeon general of usa an indian origin man but of course born and brought up in usa he was appointed that's a, perhaps the top position among the medical fraternity in usa the surgeon general okay when he finished his tenure and people asked him that you have dealt with all types of ailments and diseases and all that which according to you is the most you know ailment or the disease or epidemic which should be given maximum attention people thought he may talk about heart disease or he may say cancer or he may say hiv aids or even covid or whatever no he said the greatest disease hitting mankind is loneliness he has defined it as a disease read the book together written by him the title of the book is together by dr vivek murthy read it and see it makes so much sense it's such an eye opener with wonderful examples of how people suffer from loneliness 
because they are not doing anything about it. It's like saying that, yes, I got cancer, but I didn't go for treatment and I kept ignoring and postponing and this and that. And one fine day doctor said that, no, it is incurable and uh, you will not be uh, uh, healed at all. The fault is mine, no? When I knew that I'm not well, when I knew that I've got an ailment, I should have gone for uh, uh, treatment. I didn't, uh, uh, you know, do uh, that. What I want you to uh, do, if you have the time and inclination, just two, three minutes it will uh, take. I made a simple self-introspection uh, uh, exercise, which Sunita has converted into a slide. And today, despite being a holiday of New Year, my colleague Sonal is here with me. She came, she has come here only to help and project this uh, you know, uh, session, which we don't miss out every Saturday. So she said, I'll come and I'll see that this is done properly. So she's here with me and she is going to put on a slide of uh, you know, a questionnaire uh, to you, which you have to score you know, to see how much uh, you are being subjected to loneliness. So what I request is, Get yourself either a paper and pen or get yourself a gadget like a phone or something in which you can just start entering. What I'm going to do is to show you a number of statements. Again, don't uh, try to write that statement. Don't try to copy it. It's not important. As you read the statement, I want you to score on that statement. It will be with you. I will tell you how to score yourself so you can be truthful to yourself, right? All you have to do, as I said, is get yourself quickly either a paper and pen or have that, uh, you know, notepad or something on your uh, phone or tablet so that you can start entering the uh, scores as we put up each of these uh, uh, points. So if you are ready with uh, uh, it, Shall we start off? Yes, Sonal, you can put up the slide. Okay. This is to check how much at peace within yourself you are, which is what solitude is and aloneness uh, is. The more you are at peace within yourself, the less are the chances that you will feel lonely. So as I was just mentioning to you, don't bother writing down the words. Just score yourself on a scale of 1 to 10. 10 being highest extreme. 1 being almost 0. I don't suffer from this at all. Where you stand generally with regard to these emotions. I'm going to show you these emotions. And for just read that and write a score. 1 means no, I'm not affected by it at all. Four, five means sometimes average is that. Nine, ten means it is very extreme. You got my point. So any number between one and ten, you can score yourself for each of these, which now you are going to see. Let us see the first one. Are you confused? Never one or two. Once in a while, three, four, five. Quite often, Six, seven, eight, always nine, ten. So against the first one, just write down that number. Don't bother about writing confused, huh? just the number. Got it? So you have given a score to how confused you are generally in life. Next. Withdrawn. Do you feel withdrawn? You feel, no, I don't want to connect. I don't want to move forward. I don't want to make take risks. I want to be withdrawn. If I never do it, I'll score one or two. If I do it once in a while, three, four, five. If I do it quite often, seven, eight. If I always do it, maybe nine or ten. Got my point. So like this, we will proceed now. Third one. Hurt. Do I feel hurt? Do I feel cheated? Do I feel pain? Do I feel let down by others? Where do you stand on that score? Fourth one. Do I feel abandoned that people have left me? People don't care for me. People have deserted me. You know, those sort of things. Next. Angry. 
<laughs> Anybody who is writing zero or one for anger, I'm very scared of you because you're suppressing anger and it's going to burst sometime or the other. Anyway, be truthful and write down your score of how often you're angry. Then we move on to discouraged. Do you feel discouraged? Does your motivation level go down? Do you feel that, no, it doesn't help doing this or that? Next. Empty. Do you have the sense of emptiness? And nothing is there left. It's all over for me. I hardly have any ambitions. I don't have anything to look forward to. Life doesn't seem to have any much deeper meaning. Eighth one. Hollow. Do I feel hollow? That you know, I have this external appearance. I'm smiling. I'm mixing around with people. I'm doing this. But, you know, inside me, I am hollow. Do I get that uh, uh, feeling? And if so, how often? Ninth one is scared. Fear. How often do I suffer from fear? Fear of Omicron, fear of death, fear of this, fear of that, fear of losing my income. How often does it happen uh, to me? And the tenth one is miserable. I feel absolutely pathetic, miserable. How often does that happen to me? Uncertain. Not very sure. Yes, I'm doing this, but I'm not very sure whether I'm on the right track or not. Next. I feel useless. What am I really achieving in life? What have I gained? What are my successes so far? What purpose am I fulfilling? Do I feel humiliated? People put me down. People say nasty things about me. People insult me. How often does that happen to me? Do I feel erratic, you know, going off in different directions? Sometimes I want to do this, sometimes I want to do that. I don't know whether this is the right direction. No, no, I'll change my direction and I'll go off into something else. How often I do that? And lastly, numb. I feel, you know, that numbness that happens, no? I'm not sure where I'm headed and I don't know where I'm going. I'm losing this, uh, you know, sensations. I'm feeling that, you know, I'm disconnected with the outside world. Okay. So here are your 15 uh, uh, points. Can you quickly total them up? I don't know how many of us are still okay with doing manual uh, totaling or do you need a calculator to do whatever it is. Quickly total that uh, uh, up. And... See where you stand. If you have scored 15, 20, 25, then you are bluffing yourself. You are in denial. Nobody can score so low. If you have scored 40, 50, 60, good. Yes, Sanjay, 49, a good score. That means you are at peace, in a peace within yourself. So chances of your getting succumbing to loneliness are not very uh, high. It's only if your score starts going beyond 75, 80, any of you whose score is above 75, 80, I would like you to take note of it and do something about uh, it. And if your score has crossed 100, then you are definitely lonely right now. Your life is not going in the right direction. Sorry to you know, sound like a doomsday prophet, but this is just to help you, to shake you up and make you think. If you have scored above 100, 110, if you've crossed between 120, 130, it's really bad, I can tell you. This is not a proven psychometric test by which you can certify that this person is lonely, but it does give a very clear indicator. From there, it's up to you how you want to proceed, what you want to do, how you want to move on to the uh, uh, this thing. Satyan, I uh, repeat the uh, scores meaning if you have scored up to 50, 60, even 70, it is fine. You're not a lonely person. You are at peace within yourself. You can continue with your life. Only if you have crossed maybe 75, 80, 
then there is a small warning bell that you are heading towards loneliness. Better do something about it. You know, prevention is better than cure. And as I said, if you have crossed 100, 110, then you are definitely a lonely person. You are already suffering from this epidemic of loneliness. Please do something about it. So that was a quick exercise to help you to understand where you stand. Let me wind up the first half of this session by giving you a few practical tips on what you can actually do. That is important. No, no point in my just telling you, yes, you are lonely or no, you are not lonely. But what you can do either to overcome the loneliness or to prevent that loneliness from uh, you know, coming to you. So for that, again, we have a nice uh, little slide which uh, Sunita made very uh, 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 in minute detail and making it very attractive. And here is Sonal putting it on uh, to you. Tips to enjoy solitude, enjoy being alone, enjoy being by yourself and not feel lonely. The first one, very obvious, no? I will keep on repeating it whether you like or not. Put away all the gadgets and distractions. We have a long weekend. There are a lot of things to do. This is the ideal time to take a holiday from technology. Monday morning, you can get back to it. See how much you can do. Put away as many gadgets and distractions as possible. Then, sit in a position which is most comfortable. A simple thing like sitting in comfortable positions we have forgotten. Actually, sitting on a chair is a very unnatural uh, position, according to anthropologists. But most of us sit on chairs. It doesn't matter. Sit on chairs. But find out your comfortable position, whether you're sitting, whether you're standing, whether you're lying down. Start looking for comfortable positions. If your body is happy and satisfied, your mind will also be happy and satisfied. Then take deep breaths. That's another thing I'm sure by now you've heard so many times from experts that, you know, we breathe very shallowly. All yoga experts, all these people will go on reminding you that the deeper we breathe, the slow, slower we breathe, the greater the oxygen goes to the brain and the more comfortable we feel. Start please practicing deep breaths. If you're already a practitioner of yoga, meditation, etc., then hearty congratulations. But in case you are not, at least practice this as many times in a day as possible. The next one is recall some pleasant memory in detail. You know something, I'm a strong believer that you cannot be lonely as long as you have your pleasant memories and you cherish them. All of us have had some pleasant memories or the other, maybe in childhood, maybe in adulthood, maybe for a brief period. Maybe we had somebody in our life who gave us a lot of joy, but that person is no more in our life. It doesn't matter. The memories are with you. If you can periodically be alone, sit alone, away from all distractions and all electronics and sit down and visualize in detail those pleasant memories. One year back, this, this, this uh, enjoyable thing happened. 20 years back, I had gone through this very nice phase. I had this wonderful company, whatever it is. Please do it on a regular basis. The next is talk to a loved one, even in your thoughts. You know, I, um, I put this dog over here. <clears throat> we often, if you are if you're a pet lover, you will be talking to your dog. Does your dog understand English or Kannada or Tamil or which language does your dog speak? Obviously, none of them. But why do you get the satisfaction of talking to your dog and why does he wag his tail when you are talking to him? Because it is a thought. It is a sentiment which carries through. Now, the same thing you can do with a human being who is not physically present with uh, you, either present tense or past tense. Instead of jumping on onto the gadgetry and, you know, making phone calls or sending WhatsApp messages, just sit down, close your eyes and start talking to that person. Many of us do it. I do it. And it's so enjoyable. 
talking to somebody whom who is important to you whom you care for in your thoughts not through technology then comes observe minutest things of nature even though most of us live in a concrete jungle there's a lot of nature still existing be it the crows and uh, uh, squirrels be it the birds in the uh, sky be it those shoots of tiny little greenery which come out of concrete you know just a small crack in the concrete and you'll see one little green fellow you know sprouting up above uh, uh, that it is endless but as the old proverb goes stop to smell the flowers the same day look at different things in life here in front of you is a leaf which just came and embedded itself in the sand next to the sea and it is upright look at that leaf how it is sitting over there in the sand look at the waves they are coming closer and closer before you know it the waves will come and wash off the leaf doesn't matter look at those you know lines inside the leaf look at the waves coming closer so observe nature and you will have wonderful company then follow the movement i very often ki spend time observing ants they are fascinating people in fact next issue of banjara life i am writing an article on ants and what i have uh, you know understood about them look at a stray dog look at a squirrel scampering one or two squirrels and they can keep you entertained for hours together look at some birds and how they move that will help you to understand that there is this beautiful world around uh, uh, us yeah listen to music <coughs> read a book you know what is a book no i hope so there is this old student of mine who is connecting with me for a long uh, uh, time and she was telling me i was asking her i knew a uh, long time back that she was an avid reader i said uh, are you doing reading she's been going through some health problems and some Uh, you know health problems they don't exist but which she thinks she is going uh, through so i was asking her she said you know ali i start reading uh, something very interesting then i slowly scroll over to health issues and then i start reading that and i get scared i said why is that uh, happening because you are doing all your reading through electronics why don't you pick up a physical book and read it you can't move from the topic of that book to health issues or google or something no why are we giving up these things which we had as a legacy with us so please do the, that then fantasize go into an imaginary world and this partly uh, you know um, answer shilpa's question what should a blind person do he can't observe these things you know something should i have friends who are visually impaired their visualization their imagination is so good not only that you know when god takes away one sense out of the five senses automatically the others start getting sharpened i know of a couple of friends who are visually impaired but their hearing is so good that the moment somebody enters and is 20 feet away and is talking to somebody else they call out from here and say hi ali when did you come and the other person who has got eyesight just does not hear or observe what that person is uh, doing that is what i want you to understand even in an extreme case where you are visually impaired you are blind you can still enjoy solitude you can still understand so many things then think of some lofty ambition and visualize it in detail think of life far beyond today this week this month this year 
far beyond COVID-19 and Omicrons and Deltas. There's a beautiful world outside. It is awaiting us. Ah, Surekha's question is very good. How can we tune out of recurring grief and tune into solitude? I would like to answer that question. As they say in the TV serials, break a bar. A quick one minute break. And here is Sonu for you. Wish you all a very, very happy new year. Sorry for that. Technology. Yeah, <laughs> I thought let me not disturb Ali from his position, but I had to. <laughs> yes, so wish you all a very, very happy new year. And I was listening to Ali and thinking of all the children who have come here. And uh, when they share saying that, you know, I wanted to be alone in my room, but my mom was scared and she didn't allow me. And when I asked, what were you thinking of doing? No, when I'm, she wants me to study all the time, but I wanted to sit and color. I wanted to sit and listen to music. That's why I wanted to be alone in the room. That's what I was thinking. When the child is ready to enjoy the solitude moments, we have, we as adults have our own doubts, our own fear, which doesn't allow us to even make them that, give them that experience of being alone. And I was going through the list of words also, which Ali was telling us like numbness, that angry, confused, all those words, if you can, you will get time to reflect in yourself only if you give that time to yourself away from the gadgets. Because all the time with gadgets, there's multiple information that's coming into you. And our brain is one single mechanical piece which has to process so many things, right? That's where I feel, I feel ki reading through and looking into so many multiple information can confuse me the most. I might as well wait, meet people, read, as Ali said, books. And I feel reading Banjara life is a very de-stressing activity. But small, small articles are there where it is a personal experience which is shared. It's not the ideology which is shared or it is not a copy paste from the internet or Google or something. It's all completely personal experiences which are shared, which makes you actually visualize what the person is being through. There are so many uh, different experiences. Even the observations have been... Uh, given in that article that's wonderful i think you all must you know make that effort to reach out to banjara office and get your copies of banjara life and ali was sharing so many different exercises to uh, deal with your uh, thoughts and enjoy that solitudeness to add to that ali i'm taking this liberty to add yes. we have free counseling available over here if you are, you know, going through some phase where you are unable to, you know, deal with your thoughts all by yourself and looking out for this, uh, what you call momentary answers in the Google. If you can at the same time lift up the phone and call up Banjara office, ask for a counselor and you will have a human being listening to the other side. That will make the whole difference of sharing to a person who is physically listening, not a machine is not listening to you. 
experience it and you will know the difference what I'm talking about. Yeah. And if you have time and if you can come over, that's all the more welcome. Nothing like seeing people in person rather than seeing those virtual figures. Artificial intelligence can even create human beings of similar faces and you will think, oh, that person is speaking to you. But only if you ask a question and you don't get a reply, you will know, okay, okay this was something, you know, created. I always use this that, you know, we are in a country where we are gifted with human beings, the population. We need not attach with every human being, but at least we can keep the connect with them as much as we can, as much as you can manage yourself along with them. If you think you are responsible for the connect, okay? Otherwise, staying connected doesn't require much. Even I have few friends whom I have met after many years, but it was like, you know, meeting them just yesterday. That is the connect where you don't have to send every day good morning messages or, uh, you know, hi message every day or forward some message every day to stay connected. Connection happens through heart and the memories which Dr. Ali did tell, you live through those memories in detail. That is the joy of, you know, recalling your memories, which you have experienced it time and again. You have to open that hard drive of yours and then you see how much it is. Nowadays, we do have pictures also, right? We save pictures on our phone. Even looking through that, you go through those memory lanes. And to answer a little bit from my side to Shilpa, how many of our few blind people I have met, I feel they have a different eye by itself to see the world around. They can, you know, just smell the person and tell who is around him or her. And what color are you wearing? That's the kind of eyes they have. They have beyond our two uh, eyes what we see, actually. That's the power of visualization and understanding. Yeah. I think it's time for Ali to come back. Break is over and he'll be back in a bit. Happy listening to Ali. Enjoy your solitude. Thank you very much, Sonal. I think even to the listeners, that was a pleasant uh, interlude instead of staring at my face nonstop, right? Okay. Let me start off with, uh, you know, uh, uh, responding to uh, uh, Surekha. How can we tune out of recurring grief and tune into solitude? Okay. Now, grief, what uh, you know, makes us grieve? Some incident, some trauma, some tragedy, some setback, which has taken away our happiness. Grief can be loss of a loved one. It could be loss of a relationship. It could be loss of something which I wanted to do, which was very dear uh, to uh, me. So that is how the grief comes in. In normal times, if the uh, you know, incident is not very traumatic, as they say, time is the best healer and we move on. And slowly the grief comes down and we start moving on. But supposing the trauma is very deep, the loss is very, very deep. That is when like Sureka said, it becomes recurring grief. Every time that we think that we are coming out of it, we get pulled back again into it. We become again aware of our loss, of the trauma, of the tragedy, of the whatever has happened to us. I would recommend don't run away from grief. Don't try to you know, distract yourself. As many people will, must have told you, it's okay, it's okay, whatever has happened has happened, it was God's will, come on, let's move on, let this, 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 this. No, it doesn't work that way. 
I want you to actually go back into those moments of grief. Allow those thoughts to come in. Not suppress and not, you know, repel those thoughts. Okay, what happened? This trauma happened. This tragedy happened to me. This loss happened to me. But like, for example, if I lost a loved one, I come to the most important thing that is, I lost a loved one because I had something to lose. If I never had money in my pocket, would I have lost? I had money in my pocket. I enjoyed it for some time. I bought certain things with it. I used it for something. And one fine day, some pickpocket came and took away that money from my pocket. Now I'm grieving. But I forget that I had the money to lose the same way. I had a human being in my life for whom I'm grieving. Visualize for a minute what would have happened if that person had never come into your life. Your life would not have been as enriched as it is because that person came into your life, isn't it? Whoever it is, whatever may be the relationship. So slowly what we do is I would like you to start thinking of the good memories of those days before the trauma and before the setback occurred. What were the good memories? I mentioned that in the tips that I gave also in the first half. That we do think in terms of the good things. Believe me, I mean, people sometimes don't understand and they uh, you know, uh, look at me in a very odd fashion when I say, Whenever I have lost somebody who is very near and dear to me, I have celebrated the fact that that person was in my life. I have not mourned the death of that person. And I have lost many, many very dear people. I could have been completely pulled down by those tragedies. But I made it a point to say that I would have been poorer my life would have been poorer if that person had not come in my life. So now that I am grieving over this person, let me at the same time celebrate the fact that I had this person in my life. These are some of the simple things which eventually lead to being a complete person by myself by saying, yes, there are times when you have wonderful people in your life, when you feel so connected, when you feel so warm, when you feel so loved. There are times in your life when you don't have that. And that is something that I think all of us need to prepare. I remember my grandfather who lived up to the ripe old age of 97. He used to say that, you know, when you meet old friends, let's say from school or college, then you ask, oh, what is X doing? What is Y doing? Oh, he got a job here. No, he's going for higher studies. He's gone abroad. Then what happened? You will start talking. Oh, X got married. Y got uh, uh, married. Okay, fantastic. Then so-and-so got children. The child is studying well. Then this one got promotion. That one has built a house. Like that, it goes on. Then children's marriage is taking place. Oh, this person is so happy. He has become a grandparent. This has happened. That has happened. Like that. Oh, this person has retired and settled down in this place. This person is doing this after retirement. All that goes on. He said the time comes when you meet. If you're lucky to meet one of your old friends and you want to talk about common friends, the only thing that you can ask is, is X still alive? Is Y still alive? There's nothing more than that. Imagine the type of you know, isolation you feel when you come to that age. And most of you are going to come to that age. Longevity and healthcare is improving constantly. You are going to go into your 80s, 90s, and quite a few of you will hit a century. And that is what you, I want you to understand. That the more we understand that it is better to have loved and lost rather than never to have loved at all. And if you are complete within yourself, anybody coming into your life enriches your life. 
your basic nutrition for the brain your basic you know needs of the mind should be fulfilled by yourself others who come into your life should be like your dessert i have had a full meal now i want to enjoy some sweet or chocolate or ice cream right so the other people in your life your loved ones people whom you care for people who are important to you they are the dessert they cannot be your meal your meal should be you yourself and nobody else and there's something very interesting people who are lonely they form bad relationships even with good people that is the irony one of my favorite authors scott peck writes you know in the west they go about wearing t-shirts which convey messages so you have this big thing written over on the t-shirt that you know i am this i am that or i care for this something like that so he says people who are lonely go about with a t-shirt message which reads i need your love and when somebody reads that he realizes that this person is an emotional beggar he is incomplete by himself he is desperate so he needs my love even if i am going to give him love i am going to give love in charity not on an equal footing so scott peck says instead of that if you can change yourself and if you can convey a message which says i deserve your love see how people will come to you see how people will love you care for you befriend you and enrich your uh, life pushpa says i've always enjoyed being alone and would often wonder if something is wrong with me as people around me could not be by themselves even for 5 minutes now i know i enjoy solitude and am not lonely amazing pushpa hats off to you there are very few people like you and whenever i meet such a person you know what i do i respect that person's solitude and aloneness i don't thrust myself on that person but at the same time i leave the person with the message i am with you i understand you and i am there for you which brings me to one of the most important points of overcoming loneliness and that is i can assure you it is a guaranteed method more than all those other slides that i showed you and the different activities i mentioned which you know help you to reduce your loneliness and for you to enjoy your solitude the one thing that definitely helps you to reduce your loneliness to a great extent is to reduce somebody else's loneliness to reach out to somebody not seeking to fulfill your needs but to fulfill the other person's need yes jayshree i agree with you that loneliness is scary but why do you need to be scared a robber breaking into my house is scary but if i build a strong door and lock it up properly and i put grills on the windows the fear goes away isn't it robbers are still scary people but i know a robber cannot come into my house because i have taken all the precautions this is how it goes so i want you to understand that the more we reach out to others the less loneliness we feel there are all and many great uh, uh, people who have said you can spend two months trying to get somebody interested in you you will not succeed as much as if you spend two days taking interest in the other person talk about that person help that person to talk about himself or herself 
fill in where the vacuum is reach out to that person with no expectations no hope of getting anything back you will get that satisfaction that this is what i have done this is what i have uh, achieved Vinita said it's sometimes important to spend time with yourself as to understand your own self. I spend every morning in my balcony garden for some time and believe me, it's the best time of the day. Absolutely, Vinita. This is what I'm saying, whether it is Pushpa or Vinita, these are wonderful and amazing people. They are normal, you know, average people like you and me, but they have taken that little trouble of finding out what is the meaning of life, what is greater in uh, life. I was reading only last week about a survey done among global CEOs. Everybody wants to be a CEO of an MNC, right? 70% of the global CEOs are not happy people. Keep that as a food for thought. They've got wealth. You know what the salaries of CEOs of MNCs are. They've got the best of, uh, you know, perks. Many of them have their private planes. They have mansions. They have expense account. They have just about everything that you can think of in this uh, world. They've got, you know, status. Everybody looks up at uh, them. They've got power. They can dictate to governments. And yet they're not happy. Because deep down inside, it is the same uh, thing. Yes, Lata, rat race is debilitating. And I keep on reminding people that even if you win the rat race, you are still a rat. Why do we want to be in a race firstly? And if you want to be in a race, why do you want to be in a rat race? Be in a human race, no? Be in a race for creating joy and happiness and fulfillment. Compete with each other to say that, yes, I'm going to reach out to people. I'm going to fulfill their needs. I'm going to reduce the loneliness of people around me who are lonely. It could be some very elderly people who can't step out of their house. And for the last two years, life has been miserable for so many elderly people who have literally been locked into their uh, uh, house. I can visualize what they are going through. Can I not reduce their loneliness by 10% by reaching out to them, talking to them, interacting with them, offering my company or making some small gestures to them? You will see and you will notice the reflected glory, as you call it. At the end of the day, when you finish, you whatever else you are doing in terms of work or commitment or being a homemaker or whatever you are, do that. But if you do these small things, like I said, of reaching out to others, reducing the loneliness of others. It's such a sure shot formula to ensure that you will not be lonely. Ah, Veena says, reaching out to people has helped me big time in dealing with my bouts of loneliness. Yes, here you have. Here you have a neutral person confirming what I have uh, told you. And there are so many who will bear witness to that. We have over 300 volunteers of Helping Hand who reach out to such people, who reach out to strangers who will never ever meet them or even say thank you to them. But they know that they have done a gesture. Even if they spent 10 minutes filling up a form and giving it to them and telling them that you are not alone, please don't be scared of illness or hospital or something. They are just giving that smile to them. Roshan says, always love to reach out to people. So I have never felt lonely. Gives great satisfaction. One by one, you are getting these messages from people who are just confirming what I have said. Look around you, talk to people. There are innumerable other people like, uh, you know, Roshan or Vinita or uh, Pushpa. There's so many of them around you. Interact with them, reach out to them, and you will find that it is truly going to be a happy new year. And I shall see you again next Saturday at 11 o'clock. Till then, enjoy the first week of the brand new year. Bye-bye.